Views from when they brought down the water tower up in Lewisburg just posted uh, Friday's uh, very fascinating um, on the mark is there too with Ben Reikley and I discussing things in a heatedly fashion so that is there for you to see as well from the YouTube channel. Lanape Solar sponsors the email in basket. They are located at 140 South 2nd Street in Sunbury and it is a showroom so they would just love you to go during normal business hours and you could talk to them about a photo array at your property, whether you want to generate some electricity or some heat. They can also sign you up for a commercial lighting audit. If you're one of the decision makers at a business, they can save you money. It's just that simple. And they did it for the Snyder County Prison, and they can do it for you. And that's uh, save money. Get rid of the tungsten incomes of fluorescence and LEDs. And is, is there any other kind? Is there, are there other kinds? Uh, you I, you I don't, don't even know. know. So I just look, I look the bill. That's all I look at. <laughs> it's the green that you're <laughs> most interested. Yeah, that's one example where if it hasn't paid for itself already, it's shortly will. And that's Lenape Solar helping out the Snyder County uh, Prison with a w lighting audit. And they also have ductless HVAC for you, so check that out and you can save a buck or two. As you can tell, half a, half a true heart is here. What makes you more notable locally, more of a celebrity, being an elected Snyder County Commissioner or being uh, uh, one of the halves of true hearts? It, it depends on where I go. Like um, Friday I was out in the afternoon, out and about around town, and actually was stopped twice um, as people recognizing me uh, being a singer from True Heart, and and normally they don't recognize me as being a commissioner, although sometimes when I go to Walmart I do wear a ball cap, and that's sort of my incognito, um, uh, and, you know, disguise that day. You just don't wear one that says Snyder County Commissioner. That's and, true, and, and, yeah. you're, <laughs> and you're safe because I know those hats exist in some other counties. Maybe you have one too. But Joe Kantz is here elected as a Snyder County Commissioner uh, back in 2007. He is a Republican, which is slightly germane to our conversation. So we'll add that to the conversation. And uh, thanks, thanks for coming in. I really sure, do appreciate glad it. Sure, to be here. Occasional guest and occasional caller on our show. And Fred Keller is uh, back, 85th District State House member, lives in the Kramer area, is uh, serving dutifully as a Republican in the state house, but looks beyond party line whenever possible and uh, is uh, one of those folks who goes down there and looks carefully and reads the whole bill and understands the budget and has a, uh, open office hours and tries to save the state money, turns down the pension. and Gee, all those nice things you're saying about Fred, yet once you said he wasn't doing a good job. Would you explain that? Well, I think <laughs> I did explain this once before, and I think the... Uh, the reference, and I, 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 I've uh, thought a little bit about this, and I think the context must have been a, a voting, <laughs> you know, how you vote, because I am uh, more of an independent than anything else, maybe a libertarian. I've been a registered Republican, happen to be a Democrat now, and <laughs> I, I don't always agree with the votes. So um, that's probably what I was thinking of. But the, the other thing that we launched into when you were here last time is how faith and uh, a f affects your politics and you responded at that time okay. well, well I, I guess i, I want to say one thing and when you look at elected officials and i, I know this to be the the, the case in, in commissioner kansas you know he says this is how i'm going to behave if, if i get elected commissioner and that's how that's what he's done and uh you know i said the same thing when i got elected you know i was running for the first time and as i continue to do my job this is how i'm going to behave uh, should i get elected should i get reelected? And I think that's the bi biggest thing people want. You know, th th they get frustrated when a politician says one thing to get elected and then does something differently than what they had said they would do. But that's not necessarily mm -hmm. faith-based. I mean, you could be no, that that's without, correct. Uh, that's without correct. having anything to do with faith. A absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's just basically policy and what you stand for, whether it's faith or whether it's other items. I think people expect their elected officials to behave in a certain way, uh, as, as they said they would when they were running for office. And I think that's probably the broader picture that we need to talk about. While, while what we believe is, is part of our makeup, uh, you know, what did we tell people or how did we tell people we're going to behave and are we doing that? And if that's the case, then that should be the measuring stick by what we, you know, how we gauge whether somebody's doing what they said they would, <coughs> excuse me, would or not. So, you know, having said that, um, you, you know, again, uh, when asked questions when running for office, and, you know, I said, hey, you know, how are you going to act if this happens? I said, well, this is what I what I believe, and this is how I would would vote. Uh, when I ran for office in uh, in 2010, you know, we were talking. We were, of course, uh, in in coming out of the recession, just beginning to come out of the recession, and we were working on jobs and and policy that dealt with that. And, and I think that uh, 
there's a good record going forward for Pennsylvania. You know, since January of 2011, there's 100, about 180,000 private sector jobs that individuals have created across the Commonwealth due to policy that, uh, you know, that we've enacted in Pennsylvania. And additionally, you know, we look at the impacts from the uh, Marcella Shale. Uh, we put an impact fee on them. Uh, looking at what needed to be done, I know there's a lot of a lot of banter about hey, we need a severance tax or different things. Uh, again, I'm not a, about taxing people just because they're successful. Uh, everybody needs to pay the tax that, that, that's due under the law. But if you look at our, our severance tax, uh, or excuse me, our, our tax structure, you know there's a, there's a thing that's said a lot of times. Oh, we're the only natural gas producing state that doesn't charge a severance tax. Well, uh, we don't have a severance tax, but we have an impact fee an income tax and uh, also a capital stock and franchise tax. So again, we didn't we didn't raise those taxes, but we listened to the people of Pennsylvania and the local people when they said, "Hey, there's some impacts to this shale gas in, uh, activity that are causing at the local level." So we enacted an impact fee that dealt responsibly with the drillers and also gave the money uh, the biggest portion of the money to the local municipalities and, and, and the counties and, and the, uh, the municipalities. So again, the policies that we said we would work on, which was jobs uh, mainly, uh, you know, tax structure, uh, you know, we, we've done what we said we would do uh, going forward. So again, to Joe's point, it's not all about religion or, or, or what you believe, you know, what your faith is. It's about what policies did we advocate for when we were running for office and have we lived up to that measure? And I guess I'll I'll jump. Let Joe jump well, in here. Well, you know, I want to go back to something Fred said earlier. I, you know, I think that it's, you know, I remember back in 2007 when I was running for the first time, people would say, "Well, what are you going to promise us? You know, what? Why should we vote for you?" Well, you know, you're you're educating the voter on who you are and what you stand for. Uh, the same as when Fred ran for office, I grilled him. You know, what do you believe? What do you stand for? What? Tell me why I should vote for you or not vote for you. L let's remember that in elections we have choices. I mean, it, it, if there's only one candidate on the on the ballot, doesn't mean we have to strike their name. We can we can write somebody else in. I mean, it's not a matter of uh, not having any choices. I, I hear that a lot. Well, there's only one candidate. Well, you still have a choice. I mean, your choice is to vote for that person or to vote for somebody else or not vote at all. Um, I hope people vote. I, I don't care if they vote for me when I'm on the ballot or not. I just hope they get out and vote um, because ultimately we're representing the people that put us in office. And, and that's, in this case, a majority of, of people who vote. There, um, there's been a lot of concern, though, about religion entering into politics over the years, starting with James G. Blaine, who let a comment that the Democratic Party was the party of rum, Romanism, and rebellion slip, and he didn't say anything bad about it, and that cost him an election. Uh, you had Al Smith, who was probably voted down because he was too liberal and too Catholic and too wet uh, back in Prohibition days, or when Prohibition was being considered. And then you had John Kennedy, famously in 1960, when there were a lot of people were concerned about possibly voting for a, po a Catholic for a president, uh, and he actually had to go on television and explain that he would be a, a um, president first, an American first, and his religion would be second. Can you actually do that? I mean, if you're a person of faith, can you subjugate your religious beliefs in elected office and do your job without ever having it enter into it? My answer is no. Okay. Um, it, is, it, is who, it, it is what makes us who we are if we truly believe. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to pick on Mark for just a moment. Um, because Mark said something earlier that I thought I, found it, I find interesting. You said that you were a Republican, you're more independent or libertarian, but you're currently registered Democrat. Now, I could care less what people are registered. I really don't care. I, I happen to be a Republican, but I, I claim myself to be a conservative more than anything, first and foremost. Now, that means different things to different people. Some people, conservative means, oh, he's a right-wing right, right Christian nut job. Well, I don't think I'm that either. I, I think that I'm very level-headed um, round well-rounded person in more than one way as it turns out uh, <laughs> but um, you know Welcome I've, to that club yeah exactly <laughs> but you know uh, it just doesn't make sense to me to pigeonhole yourself as uh, a title whether you're Republican Democrat independent you know any of those things it does it does it really matter at the end of the day what matters is who we are what we stand for and what where where 
what do we do when, when we're faced with issues? I mean, if our neighbor's house burns down, are we going to look the other way and act like we don't know anything happened? Or are we going to be the ones to go, and it doesn't matter what party, they they don't care what party you are. If you bring them a, you know, a meal and, and try and help them uh, raise some money or find shelter or whatever, that's just, that's our Judeo-Christian ethics at work. And and that's who we are as a nation. Um, I mean, we, we see it all over the, the country. From day in, day out, it happens. How does faith influence your daily decision-making as a Snyder County Commissioner? Well, I mean, to me, it's it's a ma- every everything I do, and and people I think think this is facetious when they hear this. To me, it's a matter of prayer. You know, I I want to. I'm up at in the morning. I'm going to pray, and, and you know, I happen to believe that you know uh, I serve. I, I I truly I'm serving not only the people that put me in office, but I'm serving my God, and you know that's different things to different people. I know who my God is to me. Um, it may not be the same to you, or may not be the same to J- to Joe or Fred, um, but but that's important to me. That's what gets me through the day. All right, same question. Well, well I, let's look at at what we're talking about here, and I think it's important to know that because the way people believe, and, and I'll use myself for example, because I do believe, and and you know I I believe, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You know, when I look at talking to somebody, I'm not going to lie to them. I'm going to look them square in the eye and tell them what I believe and what's on my mind. And I think that people should have comfort in knowing that if you have an elected leader that believes in in making sure you're honest and believes in those values, that they're not going to they're not going to uh, tell you something that they that, that is not truthful and that they don't believe. Uh, again. The, the budget, you know, there's a lot of things that play into to, to, to what we vote on legislation all the time. And your beliefs come into some of those items. Uh, you know, there's people that are, that are uh, you know, pro-choice. There's people, people that are pro-life. That's who you are, and that's what you believe. And if somebody doesn't think that your beliefs are going to impact some of those decisions that you make, I, I, I think it's unrealistic. But have you ever had a decision that you had to make? where you thought your your faith was solely the thing that that led you to that decision that you would have not made that decision or you would have not cast that vote if you were either an atheist an agnostic or a member of another faith I'm, sorry I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, I, well, I, I'm, I'm, going, I'm just trying to think through okay. some of the things that we've discussed you know on, on the house floor and we, we've we've had some things I mean th- there's there's different uh, you, you know, I look at... What about the year of the Bible? Well, the year of the Bible was a resolution that was introduced by, I believe, Rep- Representative Saccone. And uh, I co-sponsored that. And, uh, you know, I believe that, that uh, looking at, at the Bible is, you know, the teachings. I and mean, we, we look at the Ten Commandments. And how many laws do we have that enforce those ten basic principles? I mean, we have all these laws. More than ten. Yes, a lot, <laughs> a more, lot than more than ten. ten. A lot more than ten. So when when you look at that and you look at what we're deciding on, you know whether whether somebody should, uh, you, you know what what should the penalty be if somebody steals or commits murder or grading of offenses? I mean we vote on a lot of those laws, and you know, uh, those things are wrong. They're wrong because they're wrong to society, but they're wrong to me first because they're wrong wrong in the eyes of God, and that just happens to line up with what society thinks. I mean. Uh, the Ten Commandments say, thou shalt not steal. So do our laws say that. So I, y- you know, how am I different than people in my district when they don't believe in theft and stealing? It, it doesn't matter, in some cases, how you arrive at that. You have the same, many of the same values. Uh, and, and I would go one step further to say that it's not necessarily, you know, like somebody can say, well, why did you do this? I can't always quote you a verse out of the Bible that tells you <laughs> why. I mean, I'm not that, I'm not that smart. I'm sorry, but we know because of who we are. God has given us a conscience to know whether it's right or wrong. And, and I believe there's good and there's evil. And, and it's obvious when I look at what's going on in the world today, you know, there are those that are blatantly evil. It, it's plain as day, very easy to see. Sometimes it's not so easy to see because there are those that, that are deception, deceptive. Um, you know, but going back to Joe's question, I mean, it's not, it's not just a matter of our religion or our faith. It's it it it's who it's what creates us. It's what makes us who we are. So, how do you remove yourself from a vote on a specific issue, 
and say, well, I'm voting this way because my faith told me to do so, or my religion says this. It's not just that. It's it's because my my being, I mean, who I am, tells me that it's right or wrong. So I'm going to vote whether I believe it's right or whether it's wrong. Okay, um, so you're you, you, we, we can go into something here, if, if you don't mind, and, you know, the transportation. We have to take a quick break. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that, stands oh, in the way of a break. Got to have a sponsor. I'll hold that. <laughs> but what, what, the topic is transportation? Yeah, I, I want to talk about the okay. transportation bill. All right. We're, Thanks. We're, we're going to tie that in uh, to how it uh, equates uh, to faith. Well, I did, a lot, of, not I did a lot faith. of I did a lot of praying uh, about uh, that. No, <laughs> yeah, no, not necessarily faith, but, but arriving at decisions. <laughs> why, arriving at decisions. Uh, why open the door if, if, <laughs> you, if you don't want Joe to drive through it? Right. So <laughs> on the CSVT. All right, we are going to take a quick break. Uh, we have uh, two emails pending, and we would just love to entertain more and more telephone calls. And I am so glad to say that uh, two men that I'm glad to say or acquaintances and uh, mentors in public office are here, Joe Kance and Fred Keller. We're talking about how faith influenced politics. I've already had to backtrack, uh, backtrack extensively on if I th- said that or when I said that uh, Fred Keller... Does it, what does a lousy I don't know, but by job? the time you get finished with this and go to the break, we're going to be out of time. <laughs> right, and the C- we're here at the ribbon cutting for the CSVT as I finish my first uh, break here. 1-800-795-9565, 1-800-795-9565. Lenape Solar email in basket populated by notes uh, that were sent to On The Market. KOK.com, our main sponsors of Sunbury Motor Company. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory of Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. Well, back from Ireland, and now the Nittany Lions get ready for the first-ever James Franklin game in Beaver Stadium. Penn State takes on Akron. We'll talk about it today, 3-5 to five, WKOK. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Ted Nugent. That's right, a man whose faith like influences his riffs. life. Oh, okay. <laughs> Right, yeah, a man whose uh, faith influences his hunting and his uh, respect for his quarry and uh, his disdain for all things democratic or certainly that disagree with him politically. I'm excited to hear where Fred was going to go. With I'm what sure you saying. are. So, all right. <laughs> well, real quick, uh, Kevin Hur is the engineer. I'm Mark Lawrence, Joe McGrand, and the co-host. 1-800-795-9565. Call us now. How faith influences politics is our topic. Fred Keller, the state representative, and Joe Kentz, the elected Snyder County Commissioner, is here. When we last spoke, you mentioned the word transportation. Yeah, and, and that always perks up Joe's. I, I thought Joe was dozing <laughs> off over there, so I'd say transportation, CSVT, and that'll wake him. They get him right awake here. Uh, now, what I was going to talk about is, y- you know, you look at th- making decisions, and the transportation bill was one that had a lot of, lot of items in it. And uh, having gone through it, and I know I was on the show after that, that had passed, and Mark said something about the speed limit. You remember you said, hey, that was found in there where it was going to be raised to 70 miles an hour. And I said, well, that was in the first first version of the bill. It wasn't wasn't tucked in there if everybody read it. But what you do when you're, you're, you're uh, making a vote, or what I do when I'm making a vote, and particularly one, one of these, these items, is you, you look at the pluses and you look at the minuses. And when your pluses outweigh your minuses, then, then, you, then you vote for it. Uh, you, you know, there are certain things that I look at a, as, as a, I'll call a business decision. And that's what one of those, that's what that was. You know, you, so you looked at all the things that we did. What's the responsibility of state government, infrastructure, transportation, commerce? And, uh, you know, I looked at all the things, and, and you know, there was an increase in fees and, and gas tax. But, you know, uh, looking at, at getting that done and, and having, having a bill, that's sort of how I arrived at that decision. I, I went down through the whole thing. In fact, I think Joe and I had a, a conversation probably uh, the morning of that vote uh, when, when you said, hey, Fred, I understand that uh, 
you're, you're you're still going through the thing. You might have some concerns. And I said, well, Joe, there's a hundred amendments. I don't know if you remember this. Yes, or not. I do remember that. There's a hundred amendments on this thing, and I can't give you a blanket answer of whether I'm going to vote yes or no until I see what gets attached to it. Because when you look at this, for me to have said, well, I'm just going to vote yes for this bill no matter what, would have been the equivalent of what was said at the at the federal level. Well, we got to vote for it to see what's in it. I won't do that. So in making those decisions, it's very very logical and methodical. When you're looking at these things that are that, that are what I call business decisions as far as policy and, and so on, which leads me, and I'm going to, Mark just lost control, control of the show here because <laughs> there's one here that uh, asked about taxes. How do Christians who believe in the Ten Commandments justify their belief in taxation as a way to fund government? Well, even in the Bible, it talks about taxation and, and paying Caesar is due. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of when taxes are too excessive and when you, when, you, when you place too great of a burden on people. And in Pennsylvania, we have a flat tax. Uh, which which taxes you know on, on income unless you're a corporate a C corp um, places the same level of taxation on, on all the citizens as far as income so you know looking at this it, it, nowhere in the Bible does it say there is no taxes you need to fund government and government has no other way of getting money but from taxes but the point is what's the responsibility of government and how do you manage that and and keep it within the focus that it's supposed to have. Well, let's look at religion and and taxation. Uh, Our writer also said, uh, I think in the second paragraph, taxation is theft. You know, you have other ways of gaining revenue. For example, gambling uh, has become a big source of income for governments all over the country. Yet many people would argue, me among them, that morally that's not a good way to raise money for, for government. That's right. That's correct. I, I mean, let's why why stop at gambling? What, what about Nevada? Uh, legalized prostitution and yeah. and and I've I know commissioners from those counties that have prostitution and it's a it's a nightmare. Um, Do they make a lot of money at it? I mean, is it well? That shouldn't be the question. I no, know it should be. And, and actually, let's go beyond religion with with that aspect. Is it fun? Uh, no, let's, let's <laughs> go ahead. Ask it. Is no, it no, what you're thinking? No, no, I think that's disrespectful to women. Quite frankly. Yeah. I think it yeah, really is. Why well, should it even be illegal if if you have a consenting man and a consenting woman who wish to do this? Why should it even be illegal? That's well, it isn't unless you're charging for it. If you're charging for it, now it becomes illegal. Right, but what's what's wrong with that? It's a private transaction in a private door between two consenting adults doing what they want to do. That's what uh, is that what Nevada says about it? Here, here's a good example of how faith influences our politics because we think that prostitution is morally repugnant that we have laws against it but why should we that's imposing our faith on other people well, well is that imposing our faith or, you know can you attest that every person that's engaged in that activity is doing it willfully or is there some you know is there somebody that uh, somebody trapped in that situation that can't get out of it and, and that's the question the question you need to, you need to ask on this whole thing I, you, know, you, you, you read the news stories you see the things that people not everybody that's engaged in that activity, I, I believe, wants to be into it, Mark. Well, we segued very smoothly from transportation to prostitution. Don't know how we did it, but we're going to resume. And we when had we a little come gambling back. there in the middle. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but seriously, how faith influences our politics? Three emails uh, pending. We're going to read them on the radio when we come back with Joe Kantz and Fred Kelly. You both can stay past nine o'clock. Did I make appointments to do that? A little bit. Nine fifteen, I believe. A little yeah. bit on both cases. Great. You're listening to WKOK Sunbury. <laughs> CBS News, I'm Frank Setapani. A day after al-Shabaab terrorists tried to break other Islamists out of jail in Somalia, the United States struck back with a drone attack. CBS's David Martin tells us the strike targeted the group's top leaders. Somali sources are quoted as saying the strike killed al-Shabaab's leader, a man named Ahmed Godan. But Pentagon officials cannot confirm that. Pentagon officials say it will be later today before they know who, if anybody, they hit. Now, there's late word that half a dozen militants were killed and that the al-Shabaab leader was in one of two vehicles that were hit. Al-Shabaab was behind the attack last year on a shopping mall in Kenya. It took at least 67 lives. In this country, police are still after 17 youthful offenders who escaped from a detention center in Nashville. WTVF reporter Dejan Knight has the latest on that. In in order to be in this development center, you have to have at least three felonies, so they are considered dangerous teenagers. Few of them have been caught, 25 of them still on the loose this morning. They escaped by sneaking out of their dorms and going underneath 
a fence. One thing led to another on a Delta Airlines flight, and the plane had to make an unscheduled landing. Live to CBS's Heather Bosch. The flight from New York to West Palm Beach, Florida last night was diverted because of a fight over a reclining seat. A witness says the woman next to him reclined. That woke up the passenger right behind her, who was trying to sleep on the tray table. The would-be sleeping passenger started screaming and demanding the plane land. Delta says the flight took the detour to Jacksonville due to safety reasons involving a passenger. The FBI is investigating the breach that exposed intimate photos Jennifer Lawrence and other celebrities posted in the cloud. CBS News correspondent Steve Futterman. Much of the focus so far has been on Apple's iPhone and the Apple iCloud storage system. There are reports that Apple has fixed a security flaw that could have opened the door for hackers to have access to the pictures. Apple says it's actively investigating to see whether gaps in its security system led to the leak. President Obama leaves today for Estonia to begin a busy week of meetings there and in Wales. CBS News senior White House correspondent Bill Plan. White House officials say the president will focus on reaffirming support for Ukraine and the Baltic states, advancing the drawdown of NATO troops in Afghanistan, and the growing threat of the Islamic militant group ISIS in Iraq and Syria. The Kremlin says President Putin was taken out of context when he was quoted as saying Russia could capture Kiev within two weeks if it wanted to. The East is in for a taste of violent weather that ruined Labor Day celebrations across much of the Midwest. The storm system moves eastward, impacting anyone from upstate New York to Kentucky with the possibility of damaging winds and hail. Heavy downpours as well over 15 million Americans could be impacted by those strong storms. WBBM-TV forecaster Megan Glaros, S&P futures are up a point. This is CBS News. You can make a world of difference with a little flu shot. When you get your immunization at Walgreens, you'll help provide a life-saving vaccine to a child in need through the UN Foundation's Shot at Life campaign. Thanks to customers like you, last year we helped supply 3 million vaccines. This year, let's give even more. Simply get a shot and give a shot. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. Valid through October 13th, 2014. Aggregate donation up to $1 million. Vaccines subject to availability. Some restrictions may apply. See walgreens.com slash get a shot for details. Grow the business. Keep costs down. It's not easy being a small or mid-sized business these days. Compete with the big guys. But automating and streamlining your workforce management can be. With Kronos, you can easily integrate HR, payroll, timekeeping, absence management. There's nothing to install, no upgrade costs, no long-term commitment. Just enterprise-class power at an affordable price. Learn more about getting a competitive edge for your business at Kronos.com. Kronos, workforce innovation that works. The war between Israel and Hamas that claimed the lives of more than 2,000 Palestinians did wonders for Hamas's popularity. CBS's Robert Berger has the story from Jerusalem. A Palestinian opinion poll shows that if elections were held today, 61% would support Hamas leader Ismail Haniya, compared to just 32% for U.S.-backed Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. A majority of Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza also supports Hamas. Hamas's call for armed struggle against Israel. It was the best showing for Hamas in eight years. Robert Berger, CBS News, Jerusalem. The humanitarian crisis created by three and a half years of civil war in Syria is only getting worse. The World Food Program says it supplied assistance to a record 4.1 million people last month alone. In many cases, deliveries had to cross battle lines. Frank Setapani, CBS News. This is Charles Osgood. What is customer service? Well, for some, it's a warm greeting or a smile or perhaps even knowing your name. But for the independent agents representing auto owners insurance, it's about more than that. It's getting to know you and your needs so that you can get the proper coverage. Really, it's better than customer service. It's customer care. Go to autoowners.com to locate an independent agent near you. Auto owners insurance. The no problem people. More than 700 quick lane tire and auto centers across this country, and she chooses mine. I need tires, all season, and at a great price. She wanted it all, but even she was surprised once I crunched the numbers. Soon her Taurus was ready to roll. Say, you're good, Mr. Murphy, ma'am, at your service, even on weekends. With great prices on 13 name brand tires and no appointment necessary, Quick Lane is ready to serve. Visit quicklane.com.
News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1 800 795 9565 or email on the mark at WKOK.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark Mark Lawrence and Joe McGranahan. Greetings and welcome back to the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. It is entitled On the Mark. I am Mark Lawrence. Time to flip the Groninger calendar to uh, another month. It is uh, September 2nd, 2014. Uh, we thank them for providing our good calendar here. The Lenape Solar sponsors the email in basket. It is at 140 South 2nd Street in Sunbury. Not the email in basket, but the uh, physical location of Lenape Solar. They can help you out. They can help you go solar help you harness the power of the sun for a brighter tomorrow. LenapeSolar.com. Sunbury Motor Company is our main sponsor. Two locations, Routes 11 and 15 Hummels Wharf is where you'll find the Kia, plus certain select used automobiles and trucks are there. And their main dealership is on North 4th Street in Sunbury. SunburyMotors.com. Joe McGranahan, the co-host. Joe Kantz, the elected Snyder County Commissioner. Our guest today, Fred Keller of the 85th District, he is our other guest. When we last spoke, we were talking about prostitution, and uh, we figured out it's the Michael Smirconish view that uh, prostitution should be legal and regulated just like every other industry is uh, r- heavily regulated in the U.S. of A. Why isn't that sound policy for Pennsylvania, Fred? Uh, again, I, uh, you look at what, what it is, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, I, and I don't believe that the people of Pennsylvania want to have that happen. Uh, you know, you talk to them about it. Uh, th- there's people that, that engage in those activities that are, are not doing it of their own free will. It's, it's happening. Uh, you read the stories about it. It's just a tragedy, whether, whether it's young men or young women that get trapped into that life cycle uh, or, or that lifestyle of, of, of having to exchange their body for for money and I, I it's just the expectation wrong. of women is right. is your concern do you want to well uh, I, I said I did say problem. men or women because okay. you know th- I imagine it can, I'm not an expert on this but I imagine it could be either way okay up until this point Oops. what what both of you have said you wouldn't have to in in defining yourselves and how you behave in your public capacities neither one of you had said anything that would lead me to believe that that your faith was solely the defining item until we got to this issue till we get to a moral issue like prostitution and gambling something like that there i think your faith does enter into it yes i'm going to go back to something that this is something merle phillips taught me uh, many many years ago when i first got into being a commissioner and merle and i were having a conversation and he was dealing with an issue at the state at the time that was a moral issue and and he said joe he said there are those things that we we compromise on for the the betterment of our community and our and our you know ourselves and our families but then there are those things that we cannot compromise on and and when it comes to moral issues or what i consider a moral issue i can't compromise on those um, because that's who i am and again getting back to what makes us who we are and if we are willing to sell ourselves out what are we going to do for the people we represent? Right, what we are we going to sell them out for? We have some email questions. We've got to read all three. Science and religion, says then, are they compatible? Are science and religion compatible? And how do you deal with a problem caused by a religion-science conflict in your leadership role? Have you even um, had any? <laughs> not that I know of. Okay, Fred? It, again, when you look at science and you look at religion, uh, Either one, there's scientists on both sides, you know, if you want to use global warming, uh, you know, or climate change or whatever, there's, there's people on both sides of what, you know, some of the potential causes. So I, th- I think you can have, whether it's science or religion, you can have people that agree on certain things and, and disagree on others. No, right. and, and I'll add to that, Mark. I, I think I've been a good example of this, and, and the commissioners in Snyder County. Uh, personally, I don't believe in global warning, warming. I, I've said that many times, and it's no secret. People that know me know that I don't believe in global warming. However... That doesn't mean that I don't take into consideration practices that make my earth a better uh, better place to live because I'm a conservationist. I'm on the conservation board, just like many other farmers and, and conservationists around the community. It's funny that farmers are always the ones that are blamed for the problems, but yet they're usually the ones out trying to make it well, better. Not, not for climate change. Oh, oh yeah, I'm, even for climate change. Oh, really? I'm glad yeah, you're all right. Sure. I thought you had a stroke when he said he didn't believe in global warming. Well, no, that's uh, there. There, <laughs> we have wackos of all kind on this show. So, um, let's Including see. the host, apparently. Uh, <laughs> Carrie Walters, the the, uh, the pastor of the American Catholic Church locally, says a question: What should a politician do when a public policy endorsed by his own party 
is inconsistent with his faith should he go choose cross or flag. I'll go back to what I said about Merle Phillips. Uh, there are those things you do not compromise on, and, and that's an issue that I would not uh, give in on. Fred? Yeah, I, I would have to say the same thing. There, there are certain things who define you as who you are, and, uh, you know, there's certain things that you, you, you can compromise to make things better and move, move the ball forward, and there's certain things that you say, this, this is uh, the line in the sand, and you're not going to cross it. All right, last letter is, how much taxpayer money did Pennsylvania have to spend in defending Mr. Keller's Year of the Bible resolution against the lawsuit brought by the Freedom From Religion Foundation? That uh, doesn't end with a question mark, but do you know how much that money was? Well, let me say one thing. It's not Mr. Keller's resolution. That resolution was introduced by a, a representative from the western part of the state, um, so uh, you that were a I did sponsor. I was a co-sponsor on that one, and uh, I I don't have the money on that. All right. Any plans to declare 2015 the year of the Quran or the year Jesus, the year of Jesus? Well, uh, again, I I don't believe uh, in Islam. Uh, that's not the that's not the the God I believe in. So I'm you know I would not support that. You wouldn't support it. Okay, so here's an influ here's an area where your faith has direct influence on a vote in well, the state well, house. Well, Mark, uh, how many people in Union and Snyder counties would would uh, would want me to to co-sponsor or, or or get on a, a thing for f recognizing the Koran or anything else? Uh, I'm one voter. I say please don't. Well, Joe, I, I and, and that's one one important point I'd like to make. You know, when when we run for office, we tell our constituents how we're going to behave. And when we don't do that, then we've betrayed their trust. And believe me, keeping my word is very important because it, it, it's, it's a promise I made to the people when they elected me. But more importantly, it's a promise I made when I took my oath. Right, but the yeah. point of, the point of this though is that you're you're taking your religious belief in the Bible, which I well, Mark, I believe I've taken the the, the 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 religious belief of my district. Right. Well, that could be that could be true also, but government doesn't have anything to do with the Bible. The government is separate, but yet you use government expenses to uh, embellish your faith by declaring you're the Bible. That's well, that's the I, point. I, I would argue, Mark, tell that to the founders of the United States who founded this country. The ones who are atheists and deists, you mean? That all of Christians? them. All of them, because they recognized what the Bible did for us as a nation and as a people. You know, talking about the many things we've discussed here this morning. The, the very values that we see in this country come from that book. Whether you like that book or disagree with that book or not, that book was the foundation of our nation. And that is clear. Anybody that wants to see it can see it. That right. Well, one of the books that I, I think had a big impact, if I may mention it, I don't know whether either of you have read it, it's, uh, by, uh, it's called American Gospel. And it's uh, about public religion in the United States of America. It was written by John, uh, I think it's John Meacham, who was the editor of Newsweek, which was kind of a left-wing publication. But it was a very thoughtful study about how religion has played a part in American social life and, and government life from the start of the country. And it's very, very well thought out, I think. All right, we only have a moment left. An additional comment, please, Joe. Uh, I, I'm sorry I have to leave early to get to my commissioner's meeting. Fred said something a minute ago, and this is what I want to go back to. When I first ran for office, and this is, this is where the rubber meets the road, in my opinion, people would say, what are you going to promise? My promise to my people that I talked to in my election cycle was the only promise that I make is that I will look at every issue, I will give it the, the due diligence that it deserves, and I will make a decision based upon what I see in, the, in that issue. Whether, you know, I'm going to read the, side, the, the issues on this side of the fence and this side of the fence, and then ultimately I'm going to come down to a decision that I can live with, that I can sleep at night when I go to bed, knowing that it doesn't uh, denigrate or um, alienate my beliefs as a person, because that's what I'm standing up for. That's who I'm introducing as myself to those people who are voting for me. Right, and you're one of the lucky <laughs> folks that can do that at, at your workplace, you know, that uh, your faith can influence your your decision-making. Last word, please. Well, right. you know, looking at that and, and, you know, just sort of building upon that, you know, th there's things that, that I classify as business decisions. And, they're, you know, you look at uh, uh, the transportation bill, you look at all these things that deal with the responsibilities of state government, and there is a little bit of there, – there is overlap there when you look at some of the other items, uh, you know, that we talked about. You know, you, you were talking about, you know, what people can do, um, regulate, legalize, that kind of stuff, gambling and so on. Um, so, you know, looking at that, you, ha you have your business decisions and you have your, your moral decisions. And to Joe's point, uh, 
uh, Joe McGranahan's point, you know, that's the only point that we really got into discussion on, on whether we disagree on some things, and that's when you get onto the onto the social side of things. But but here's here's the important point: most of what we do has to do with moving Pennsylvania forward and making a better life for the, for the people uh, here in Central Pennsylvania and for the Commonwealth. And and looking at making the decisions on that, it's uh, you know our budget, it's uh, you know all the, all these things that are important to us. Um, you know, we we need to work together. The, the one thing about crossing, there was an email here about crossing the aisle, and and you know, what do you do when you're when you agree different, for your, different from your party? Well, I think I've shown the fact that I don't always. I'm not a party person. I'm a person of principle, and that's what I stand on when I go to Harrisburg to represent the 85th district. Well, thank you so much for coming thank in, you, gentlemen. You got 30 <laughs> minutes to get to your meeting. Google <laughs> Google says that uh, with current 11 and 15 traffic, you'll make it within 30 minutes. Okay, so. good. And staying under <laughs> the you, posted gentlemen. legal. It'll soon be quicker, Joe. <laughs> yes, yeah. it'll soon be quicker. You'll be on the bypass. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and we will return momentarily. You are listening to On the Mark on News Radio 1070. And WKOK. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory of Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. Know what's the best thing about Gettysburg, PA this time of year? Everything! I love the farm markets here in Adams County. The fresh fruits and vegetables and all those homemade goodies. Mm -mm. It's wine country, too, with some of the tastiest you'll ever find. And it seems the air is always filled with the sounds of a country festival or an outdoor concert. It's a great time for the whole family, or just the two of you. Plan your visit today at DestinationGettysburg.com. And you thought we were just history. Go Hunt PA to enjoy the outdoors, to be with family and friends, or to put food on the table. Whatever the reason, the Pennsylvania Game Commission invites you to Go Hunt PA. Log on to GoHuntPA.org to find information on wildlife, hunting, licensing, and much more. While you're there, subscribe to their email service to get all the latest news, like reminding hunters that waterfowl and dove seasons are open in September. Consult the Migratory Game Bird brochure at GoHuntPA.org for details. Go Hunt PA. Visit GoHuntPA.org. Get the speed, power, and bandwidth you need to connect all your devices with Wideband 100 high-speed internet from Service Electric Cablevision. Perfect for your family or home office. You'll be blown away as you simultaneously stream shows and movies, download music, play online games. The possibilities are limitless. And for the biggest savings, bundle Wideband 100 with TV or phone service. Visit secv.com today for unrivaled speed and savings. Service not available in all areas. Visit secv.com for more details. The Greater Susquehanna KIZ helps make your dreams and your ideas a reality. How many of us think we have a product or service that could take over the market but don't do anything about it? The KIZ helped me launch my product, Dirty Boy Laundry Detergent, from the ground up. From design, production, trademarking, and marketing, you name it, they helped. Just visit my website, dirtyboyclean.com, so you can see for yourself. Having someone in your corner is invaluable. Visit gskiz.org today. That's gskiz.org. I was fonder of cat scratch fever, personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this is this is also this is the elevator version of is that. Is that song. the elevator yes. version? Cat okay. Scratch, scratch fever. Fever. All right. 
Uh, the webcam is up and running. If you'd like to see into the studio, we've zoned in, zoomed in no, on just uh, Joe and I. Now Joe's back in the camera. Uh, now that our guests have uh, gone to their important appointments henceforth. So uh, we thank them for coming in. But the webcam is up and running. Crystal clear audio, ultra sharp video, new camera angle, and it just looks perfect. And Kevin would just love you to watch his hard work doing all the switching and putting the keyed information on it and yelling at us uh, when we go off camera and telling us don't itch your nose in that way mark because it looks like <laughs> dot 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 all right on the marks brought to you by the sunbury motor company family-owned dealership since 1915 fourth street sunbury routes 11 and 15 hummels wharf you can build a ford car or truck to your precise specifications at sunburymotors.com maybe pick out a particular accoutrement that you think is pretty critically important like in kevin's uh, case it's whatever vehicle they're giving him for free that week so i believe he's driving around an f-150 lariat uh, so yes. it's, it's it is a ton of truck actually uh, it's about it three tons of truck <laughs> but anyway what do you know about that truck Kevin? It, it, it's the uh, f-150 lariat number one truck uh, selling truck at 37 straight years is the f-150 and they have 75 f-150s in stock with 7500 bucks off starting as low as 22859 in the XL, XLT, STX, uh, King Ranch, Lariat, Platinum Limited, and Mark's favorite, the Raptor. Mm, wow. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, I, I have not driven a truck in maybe 20 years, oh, geez. give or take. Now, it takes a little bit to get used to, but I, I definitely feel a little bit different. Well, mentally, if there was ever somebody who should be in a pickup truck, Kevin, it's you. I, I, I actually feel, I don't know, I, I feel more powerful in that truck. Maybe it's because it's, it's a more powerful truck as well, because it's got the full towing package, and the backup camera will allow you to back up and see the hitch, see the ball on the hitch, so you can actually oh gosh. lock in <laughs> perfectly. So none of this forward, backward, right. forward, backward, forward, right. backward, or, or, or left. No, your other left. And, and this truck will actually uh, kind of counterbalance anything you're towing for sway. If it feels that the, the trailer is, in, is swaying a little bit too much, it will actually adjust to help the trailer not sway as much. It, I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. It's just completely amazing. So in other words, this, this, co this truck can overcompensate for your poor driving. Exactly. <laughs> it, no, it, it, it will appropriately <laughs> compensate for right. your poor driving. You right. can only do so much, so Kevin, so <laughs> keep it together. Well, thank you. The yeah, little old lady should still be aware if they see Kevin coming in that truck. And We're going to hear more. <laughs> my son says, you know, um, I, he was in the back seat the other day. I always put him in the back seat to see what the room's like. And he says, I have more room here than anything else I've ever been in. <laughs> and that's the back seat of a pickup. Now, when I drove a pickup last, there was no such thing as a back seat in the pickup or a cab or extended cab. Well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, very much appreciate it. We'll hear more about this. Uh, <laughs> Quite a bit, I'm uh, sure. This uh, F-150 Lariat as the week goes on. But this is a nice truck. I went out and uh, did a little walk around. Yeah, and it looks like it. I saw it on my way in. Perfectly normal price tag and lots of incentives to make sure that uh, you can uh, take it home with you. A Lenape Solar email in basket is also open. Kevin has a solar panel on top of his head, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this. It's generating electricity that's helped uh, keeping his brain going this morning, and so uh, even on a cloudy day, there's a little bit of radiative heat getting through, and that is helping Kevin. LenapeSolar.com, their main website. Two quick news items. Mm -hmm. Teachers may be striking soon. The Line Mountain School District, a meeting is scheduled for this week, and a strike vote could happen there. School did start normally today. Teachers in the district have been working at Line Mountain for two years without a district contract. Mark McDade of the PSCA tells WKOK a strike is inevitable due to the stalled contract negotiations. And finally, in news, uh, you probably heard this on Labor Day, the FBI says it is addressing the allegations that nude photos of several female celebrities have been stolen and posted online. A statement released by the FBI Monday doesn't elaborate on what steps are being taken to determine how intimate images of various actresses were leaked. The photos and others began appearing online Sunday. And of course I did ask our guests before they left what is the way that one could possibly prevent nude photos of yourself from ever appearing online and their answer was don't take them don't take them okay <laughs> right. so yes we have the common sense advice there well we were talking about how faith influences politics uh, and i know you're very active in the saint pius the 10th catholic church catholic and um how does faith influence your politics and you're a lutheran lay minister so <laughs> right well you know what i think we all are we all are products of our environment to a certain extent and we all uh, have been brought up a certain way we were taught what's right or wrong 
by our parents, by our teachers, by our religion. And, and I think we always, are, to some extent, are going to bring that to the table when we have to make a decision. But I think in, in government, you have to be very careful to take your personal faith out of the equation. Uh, to the extent that you can. And I agree with both Joe and with Fred that you can't, can't always do that. But, you know, there have to be times where you have to look at it and say, okay, this is what my church teaches, this is what I believe, this is what the situation demands. And then, you, as our one writer said, what would you choose, cross or, uh, or uh, party? I don't think it's cross or party. I think it's uh, what you believe is in the best interest of the people you're elected to represent. I try to remember that I have a, a civic office, not a religious office. I wasn't elected you know, pastor of the Shemokin Dam community, I was elected the mayor. And so I have an obligation to look at everybody in the community in deciding an issue. And I think our borough council does that beautifully, too, and make the decision based on what's best for them, not what's best for me or what I believe. But if I'm representing them, I'm representing them, not me. I'm representing them. To the extent that I can, I try to put everything else aside and make the decision based on that. Can you think of any time your faith has influenced your political views? No, I honestly can't. Not on the death penalty, not on abortion, well, not it's on... Well, a death uh, penalty, I think the church is opposed to the death penalty. I support it, so... Okay. Uh, but it's just, to me, it's a matter of law. It's a matter of someone has done uh, an unthinkable deed. They've taken another human life. There has to be a punishment for that, and the punishment has to be proportionate to the crime they committed. All right, but uh, so your faith doesn't influence that. But medical marijuana, prostitution, gambling, faith influence your appreciation or I don't know that those? it's faith, but I th I think that there are certain moral concerns that I think all of us would have about prostitution, about gambling, about drugs. I'm, I, you know, you can't look at any one of those three and say, "Gee, they're all good." I mean, can you? They aren't all good. I mean, there are drawbacks, and I think you have to determine as an elected official or as someone who's in a capacity to make a decision whether or not the good outweighs the bad or the bad outweighs the good, and you have to vote on that. All right, one eight hundred seven nine five nine five six five. Weigh in on this, folks. Uh, we've had uh, oh, we've had phone silence uh, so far on this uh, topic, but boy, we'd just love to hear from folks how faith influences our politics, how our religion has uh, helped uh, put our government where it is. I would just love to hear from people on this. We haven't heard much, but uh, you know, I just mentioned what same-sex marriage, uh, homosexuality. We we talk about different rules that would uh, change or make it more difficult for women to get an abortion, uh, the death penalty, or medical marijuana. All of these are places where folks have said their faith has influenced their decision-making and that they should feel one way or another. 1-800-795-9565 is our telephone number. Call us now on this topic. I think this is uh, rich for a, a wide range of opinions in our valley here. 1-800-795-9565. Uh, one of our listeners, I believe this is signed, yes, signed by Margaret, who I haven't seen in almost 48 hours, says, Good morning, guys. I have to check in and support Mark State about why there are laws against prostitution or gambling, etc. If the situation is consenting adults in private, that should be enough in most cases. I'm also on his wagon as far as separation of church and state. Fred should keep that in mind. Also, as a Union County resident, I think it's a waste of time to have a year of the Bible. But be fair and open-minded. We should have a fair and balanced response if some folks worship a different imaginary friend, i.e. God says Margaret. An imaginary friend, all right. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, you know, that's let, what let's go back and folks. we have an instance here where, uh, I don't know whether you want to call it prostitution or delightful conversation, however you want to phrase it, but there's a definite local impact and, and the fact that there is a certain amount of concern from society over prostitution or whatever you want to call it. In the Miranda Barber case, uh, she posts an ad in a publication, someone locally responds, and the guy winds up dead. Now, that's not a victimless crime. That's not, you know, and she obviously uh, placed the ad with the intent, if you believe her, of committing that crime. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, aren't there, there are social and moral implications there that go far beyond just private consenting adults? They were both consenting adults, except that he never was given the chance to consent to being murdered. Well, yeah, but I, I don't think that you can say that that's why prostitution should be illegal, because, you know, some s tiny percentage of the population is interested in homicide when prostitution takes place. Well, it's not only that. Place. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there, there are instances, if you watch television or read the news or see the news, there are instances where prostitutes have rolled the john, if you will, okay, taken well, his it, money. I mean, they're, they're, it's it, not a very <laughs> nice 
occupation. I think <laughs> you're making my point, though. Here's th those are cases where making prostitution illegal didn't solve anything. You know, like Joe, Joe said that he would not favor legalizing prostitution because uh, that could potentially lead to the exploitation of children. Well, guess what? Prostitution is illegal. And it's already happening. And is it going to be better if you legalize it? Well, I, I don't know, but it's it, I'm just saying that making it illegal didn't accomplish the point that you wanted, and that's to prevent the exploitation of children. And again, will making it legal change that? I don't think, I don't see how it possibly could have any influence on it either way, but it would allow consenting adults to do what they wish to do behind closed doors well, if any they, way if they wish. Well, if they don't get involved in criminal activity, beyond the nature of the event itself to the extent that it's criminal in enterprise, no one does get involved. But, I mean, there's also the transmission... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Prostitution is illegal. Yeah, it is, but if, it's a, if, if I hire a prostitute or you hire a prostitute and we con consummate our business arrangement and go on with our lives and no one's hurt... I agree. It's hard to say there's a there's been a harm or a foul there, unless it's you consider it morally offensive, in which case there is harm. Which or foul. you do? Um, yeah, to be honest with you, I think it's uh, the same way I consider drugs to be to the extent that they harm people's lives, and I think that's a good point. How much harm is done by the institution that you're talking about? Um, you know, as let's take take it a step further. What about strip clubs? Where do you come down on them? Is is that immoral to you? I think consenting adults should be able to go to them. I really don't like them, and I don't think that Ever they... Ever been to one? Uh, yes, yes. See, I haven't, so I'm... <laughs> Decades ago, I went with some friends after a Baltimore Orioles game, and it's a life-changing experience. You know, you see women that dancing, and it's not pleasant. It, you, you, you almost... You do feel bad for them, and you feel bad afterward. It just... And that's my personal stand on it, you know, that I, I just don't... I just don't think... And I love what Fred said about exploiting women and children. And I think that's a very good point. And you have to be very careful about that. But what if they want to be exploited? But, but what if they don't a, mind? That was going to be my next <laughs> sentence. If you get a, a woman who is interested in that and she's interested in dancing and of course exploiting women is like a major thread through this whole country uh, in so many levels, in so many industries, in so many places. So I just think it's strange that we say, okay, w it's okay if you exploit women in the workplace or in our churches or wherever it happens to be but if you put them on a stage and they're actually doing the dancing oh no that's illegal you can't do that you know so <laughs> i i just think but it's not illegal no I, but i find it offensive i mean not it, offensive but municipalities I just think have it's, attempted it's to right. zone it out but i mean even the courts have held that you must provide certain zones where it's permitted hence the red or what do they call the red light district in boston and mm -hmm. baltimore where it's all zoned into one area where people can go there or not go there, depending on what their interests are. Right. But I mean, if you if you believe there is a moral component to that decision, then you have to oppose it. If you don't believe mm -hmm. there's a moral mm -hmm. component, no, I wouldn't impose my morality on someone else. You know, I I find it I'm very disinterested in that, and I think it is exploitive of women in many cases. But I so it's a if, societal ill. If I would, no, I just think it's a personal decision that two people are making that may not really be ideal. Well, for more than two another. people are making it if it's a strip club. I mean, they're the owner right. of the club. But, well, the girls. I think but you have a viewer and a doer. And I think very often there may not be a, a sufficient range of choices for the doer in that case. But so who's worse, who's worse in that equation, the viewer or the doer? Well, or do they I share don't, I don't equal know. blame? You know, if, if you think that there may be an element of exploitation taking place, in that case, then it's definitely the viewer is wrong because the other one becomes the victim in that case. So. Well, I mean, you know, we talk a lot about whether or not certain drugs are gateway drugs. You know, are things like strip clubs gateway sexual activities, if you will? If well, you but see, here you go. You, you, here you go again. Okay. Where you take <laughs> your personal view and you say this is that you think drugs are illegal, and that's uh, and they I'm are not, illegal. I'm, I'm not sure. No, yeah, let me let me say that <laughs> immoral? differently. You feel that it, yeah, immoral. We'll use that even though that's okay. not specifically how you worded it. Okay, so you think that drugs are immoral, and I'm not sure I feel that differently about it either. So I take that viewpoint, and I say, okay, I feel about it this way, so therefore you have to also, because I'm in a legislative position, you know, years ago in the state legislature, wherever the marijuana laws came from, because I feel this way, you have to comply with my personal viewpoints, even though, like, uh, Somebody else could sit in that chair next to you and say, oh, I love to smoke marijuana as well. I love to gamble. I love to go to Nevada where prostitution's illegal. And you in would, some counties. And people who, like you or I, might say that that is wrong 
have to impose our will on them, and I don't think that's right. I have to take a quick break here because it is the bottom of the hour, so we're going to do that, but honestly, we, we, we need more call. phone we calls. Have a, we have one waiting here. Yeah, so stand by, Paul. Just hold on one second. 1-800-795-9565, our telephone number. Oh, that is 1-800-795-9565. What, if anything, should be legal in the U.S. if somebody finds it morally repugnant? Then we have to outlaw it right away. one 800 795 9565. Mobile Deposit is here at the Northumberland National Bank. Use your Nori Bank mobile app on your smartphone or iPad to log in. Take a photo of your check and enter the deposit amount. It's a convenient alternative to visiting your local branch to deposit one or two checks. Plus, there are no lines, no paperwork, and no worries. With Mobile Deposit from the Northumberland National Bank, banking just got easier. Download the Northumberland National Bank's app now for your convenience. Try it and see how easy it is to have 24-7 account access at your fingertips. We're used to dealing with problems, standing by you through it all. But whenever it comes to service, The customer always comes first. The Northumberland National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. At Northumberland National Bank, the customer always comes first. Here's a bright idea. Why not use light to carry billions of bits of data per second, making network connections hundreds of times faster and much more reliable? That's just what Penn Teledata's fiber optic network does. And we've invested in over 9,000 miles throughout our communities, connecting schools, banks, healthcare networks, and even wireless towers that enable your smartphone to be, well, smart. Know what else is smart? Connecting your business to our fiber network. See the light with Penn Teledata, your recommended source of fiber. Would you trust a blocked artery to a plumber? Then why trust the health of your network to outdated technology? Connect at the speed of light with Penteladata's state-of-the-art true fiber optic network, offering the smartest, most reliable data connections to keep operations running stronger than ever before. That's why more doctors and business professionals trust their company to Penteladata. When choosing a provider, get a second opinion. You'll be glad you did. Penteladata, your recommended source of fiber. You already know, Topahawken Mountain Spring Water is delivered to your door in a variety of sizes and containers. Now, they are the proud distributor of Mountainside Coffee, offering 100% Colombian coffee. Assorted teas and hot chocolate delivered right to your business or organization. There's never a fee for equipment and delivery is free. Topahawken Mountain Spring Water and Mountainside Coffee, there's no better duo on earth. Visit online at mountainsidecoffee.com to see how you can take advantage of this winning combination. Well, back from Ireland, and now the Nittany Lions get ready for the first-ever James Franklin game in Beaver Stadium. Penn State takes on Akron. We'll talk about it today, 3-5 to five, WKOK. All right, welcome back to the KOK Live Telephone uh, Talk Show. Kevin Hur, the greatest engineer the planet has ever known. I am Mark Lawrence, the most above par person at the catbird seat right at the moment. Remember, you don't want to be above par, but I, I am by mandate of those around me. And Joe McGranahan is our co-host, mayor of Shemokin Dam. He is a person of faith and a person who's an elected leader, s- sworn to uphold the Constitution, put his hand on a Bible. Oh, wait, that, that, that's crossing a line. No, I did. You, know, you, did, you did put <laughs> your hand on the Bible. Oh, good for you. All right. And swore that he'd uphold the U.S. Constitution. There's irony for you right there. 1-800-795-9565 is the toll-free line. 1-800-795-9565. How faith influences our political life politic is what we're discussing. And Paul's been waiting for quite a while. On the market, WKOK.com is the email address, and it plops right into the Lenape Solar email in basket. Paul, thank you for patiently waiting. You are now on the mark. Well, I've been patiently waiting for forty some years to get on the to get on on the mark. Even before Kevin was born, you wanted to get on his show. Now, you guys were talking about prostitution, and I remember a program uh, many years ago of when a prostitute and a wife was on the program, and of course, naturally, the wife was condemning the prostitute as trying to steal her husband. And the prostitute said something that makes very much sense, and that is she looked at the wife and said, Honey, 
if you do for your husband what I do, he would have no need for me. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, okay. All They'd right. be out of business. Right. What, what kind what of shows p- are you watching, Paul? <laughs> point point being, though. No, Jerry Springer. <laughs> oh, well, that's what oh, I yeah. thought. <laughs> you don't watch Jerry Springer, do you, Mark? Well, I've seen oh, enough yeah, of it yeah, to yeah. know what it's about. <laughs> okay. Besides, I go. To, I used to go to a hunting cabin, and we'd watch it. Thank you, Paul. Very much appreciated. Well, he's got. Well, I think he had a point that he was about to make. On you. Oh, I thought that was the point. Paul, no, call us back I'm if you sorry. have more to say. Sorry about that, Chris. You're on the mark. Yeah, uh, I'd like to compliment Joe on his uh, summary of his feelings of how he uh, tries to uh, operate with his religion and uh, try to not uh, make. Th- direct calls on civic matters with his religion. I thought that was a very nice summary of a real, very proper position. And, but with the, the, the sins and the, the, the gambling, the prostitution, the drugs, it's, it, it is a very narrow line. Uh, whether you're, but when you have things, Ill, make things illegal because they're sinful, whether you're making them worse for everybody involved with legalized prostitution you could you could regulate and control them and make sure people are tested in the and uh, for diseases and whatnot and everybody can do them much more safely relative to getting rolled or mugged and everything else if it's legal when it's not legal you can't do that on the other hand with gambling it takes to get money away from the gamblers and funnels it toward the government, and uh, gambling is fairly in- innocuous for most people, although it does have uh, severe economic consequences for others. But it also results in the state putting out advertisements to go gambling, mm-hmm. which I find kind of repulsive myself. Why right, encouraging people to be, do something. Yeah, why should the state be encouraging gambling? Well, at the same time, Even running ads running saying it, don't gamble if you have be? a if, if you have a gambling problem. Here's information on gambling. Well, Anonymous. yeah, they started that <laughs> finally, but it's sort of an add-on, and, and whether it really will affect anybody. I mean, it's a good thing to add on, and it m- ameliorates that to some extent. But still, you know. Right, you hear the ad that says, gamble, 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 gamble. And if you have a problem, please call 1-800-795-9565. And the, and the other problem don't with stop the gambling. whole thing is, uh, <laughs> with religion that you were talking about, is where the line is between what, when you should make things illegal because of your religious beliefs. Uh, it, for, I think... Uh, Sin is a choice, you know. You choose God, or you choose good, or you choose sin, even in most religions. But then when you add the force of law behind it, uh, does that really mean you should be adding the force of law behind it? It's a, it's a, that's also a very naughty question. And, for instance, uh, abortion. Uh, just because you choose to believe one way, or homosexuality, where that used to be the law too. You know that it was illegal, but with abortion, just because you believe it's it's bad, does that mean you should enforce it? Force it on everybody. That's always I mean, a good. That's really always a good question. Questions in a lot of ways. You're right, right, and and they're awfully hard to answer, and I think it depends on the situation. You have to you have to give me the specifics. And as the specifics change, probably so does the answer. All right, 1-800-795-9565, the open line. Paul, go ahead and make your point. Go right ahead. Well, I wanted to ask Joe, when he has a decision to make pertaining to the people that he represents, is his decision based on what he, as the individual, feels is right, or does he make his decision based on the majority of the people? Not the majority of the people that elected him, but how the majority of his constituents feel. Because if he does or doesn't, then he or not he doesn't violate, but he doesn't represent the people, which is what we are supposed to be as far as a government. Uh, according to democracy, it is supposed to be a, a government that is run by people. But if you don't do what the majority of the people say, then you base your decision on your feelings, which now takes it the government 
of the people out of, of the decision making. I can answer your question this way, Paul, by saying that the majority of people never contact you about any issue. If it's something they feel very strongly about, you'll hear from those people who feel strongly affected one way or the other. And sometimes you have to do a little more in the way of outreach to determine what the community wants. One of the things I did, and I'm sure others have done it, is I conducted a community survey last year, and I asked people about how they felt about certain things in the community, what was important to them, what they thought I should be working on. And now I try to act on that. When something comes up, I try to look at the results of that survey and determine what it is the people have told me about the issue and go that way. But, you know, unless there's a tie vote of borough council or unless there's an ordinance I feel strongly enough about to veto, the mayor doesn't usually have that responsibility. It's the council members and it's the elected representatives who have, have that kind of responsibility. All right. Thank you, Paul. Much appreciated. Uh, we have one call coming in and Dave has been waiting. Good morning, Dave. You're on the mark. Good morning. I just have a question on this. If we're if all these people that are always worrying about separation of church and state and how religion shouldn't have anything to do with government and whatnot, how can you come up with this, with prostitution or something being a sin that what is a sin based on other than someone's religious belief? Well, where, where do you base the fact that it's be considered a sin? You know, it's not one of the Ten Commandments doesn't say thou shalt not be a prostitute or patronize a prostitute. There's one that says thou shalt not commit adultery. So ex to the extent that a married person does it, I suspect there is a religious component there. But, I mean, wh where, is, where is it defined as a sin? Well, that's the thing that, that Mark was going on about, you know, you guys was going on about these laws are based on something being a sin. So if, if you're keeping religion out of everything, how would it be considered a sin? And so if it's not a sin, why can't it be legal? Well, sin is a religious thing. I don't think uh, we should re use religion to influence our politics. So if there's something the community finds uh, just generally repugnant that uh, you know we can all agree upon, uh, uh, I think either on mic or off mic, they said you know something about child prostitution or uh, s bestiality, child child something, like that, something like that, then I, I think if the community can come up with a, a near unanimous consensus that this is abhorrent behavior, skip religion or the fact that it's a sin, then we should consider regulating that. But, you know, the community is divided on all of these other topics, whether it's drug laws or prostitution or... Um, like your bestiality thing, that's not against the federal laws. That's only against different state laws and community laws. <laughs> okay, so, what, all right, fine, that's fine. That was part of the Senate bill that... Uh, oh, that's right, yeah, Obama you had pointed that out order before. ...in the uh, homosexual pay rights. Right, and we asked Tom Marino about that, but he ignored us, <laughs> so that didn't work out. So, All right, thank you, Dave. Appreciate your questions. Yeah, very very you thoughtful you questions here. All right, one more caller before the break, and then we'll take one more quickie break. Uh, Frank from uh, Shemokin, thanks for calling in. You're on the mark. All right, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, the laws that we are abiding by throughout the world uh, are based on religious uh, precepts and come right from the Decalogue from the Ten Commandments. Uh, basically, laws of morality and so on. Uh, even the pagan world borrows from the Ten Commandments. The institution of our laws from the Founding Fathers and so on, uh, and that basically wrote laws for morality, protection, for people to live uh, life as it's uh, morally good. The problem is, is that as culture progresses, people forget the, a standard of morality. And I think the precepts that we are looking at and say, well, it's not in the Ten Commandments that you can't be a prostitution. Well, there were certainly things regarding in the book of Leviticus against people who had immoral, who made immoral decisions, stoning and so on. So all the laws that our founding fathers continue to write and continue in our culture is to protect from degradation of women, slavery, bondage, so on, etc., and abusing the flesh. So when it does come down to how do you decide that your religion is not influencing the laws? It's always and already been there. So it, it's kind of like an, an argument that doesn't need to be stated. All the laws today are kind of looking at, well, the culture's progressed to where we don't really care about those laws. 
so now we basically come to the crisis of, well, what will we allow so people can make money? And entertainment, 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 and uh, self-gratification, whatever, has led us to where we are in these decisions. Can we make money if we legalize something? And, um, you know, there were no issues of people using drugs back in the Old Testament because people weren't manufacturing, uh, well, I'm sure the elements were there, but they weren't discovered. So anyway, that's my spin and my thoughts on where you're at today. Thank All right. you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate your that. call. Yeah, well right. thought out, uh, probably written down. Well, you know, so a lot succinct. of this is situational ethics, too. You know, as I said before, what's the situation? Define it for me, and then we'll determine what's right and what's wrong. All right. 1-800-795-9565. One of our emailers uh, has the subject of faith. Uh, another one is relates to State Representative Keller, who was here earlier, and we'll read those on the radio when we come back. They have fallen into the Lenape Solar email in basket. Our toll-free line is 1-800-795-9565. That's 1-800-795-9565 and our main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory. Toria Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. Hello, this is Justin Charles from Lenape Solar. Did you know that through energy savings of almost $5 million per year, our customers are saving the environment the equivalent of over 98 million miles of driving and eliminating the annual carbon dioxide emissions of over 5,600 homes each year? Do you want to know how to be a part of these amazing numbers? Call us at 286-1496 or visit us online at Facebook or LenapeSolar.com today and find out more about our exclusive Buy American Partners for solar energy and energy efficient lighting upgrades. There's a fire you get in your belly when you're working on your car. Nothing kills that feeling like a dead battery. Either way, the job's got to get done. Buy any new battery online at AdvanceAutoParts.com and pick it up in store in just 30 minutes. Like a long-lasting Autocraft Gold battery, engineered with power frame technology. Job's done, and you can tackle your next big project. Advance Auto Parts. Let's get you back to the garage. Visit AdvanceAutoParts.com now to learn more. You need a website. Why not do it yourself? You know your business. With Wix.com, you can create a professional website all by yourself. It's easy and free. With Wix.com, you don't need to be a programmer. Just use the intuitive drag and drop website builder. There's no limit to how creative you can be. It's your website, your style. Show the world what you can do. Create your own stunning website today. Go to Wix.com. It's easy and free. Welcome back to Cat Bukeo. Scratch Fever. <laughs> <laughs> This is the <laughs> reggae version. All right, okay. <laughs> Cat to scratch a fever. One eight hundred seven. Kevin just shakes his head. No, no, no. Tell them to stop. One eight hundred seven nine five nine five six. We always read emails in the order in which they arrove. And here is the first. Uh, Than says many people in Union and Snyder County respect all religions. Islam's God is the same as the Christian God historically. Says Than. So thank you. Uh, another listener says uh, Joe Kantz said that if he sees his neighbor's house burned down, he'll feel the need to help. Well, what about if he sees his neighbor who is hungry or thirsty? Does he give them food or water? Or if his neighbor is sick or in prison, does he look after them? If they need clothes, does he clothe them? And if he sees a stranger, does he invite them in? Does the county have an obligation to house and feed the poor, elderly, and disabled among us? Says Blaze. Well, Blaze asks someone Blaze. could ask that same question of Blaze. I mean, if he's uh, he or she, whoever Blaze might be, 
uh, believes those things should be done, are they doing them? Okay. And, and, you know, why? I, I think what we've done is we've come to the realization that individually we're limited by what we can do, but as a society we can do more. And I think society has put in place things, maybe not enough to suit some people, but they put in place things to feed the hungry and clothe the uh, naked. And Right, uh, government takes this up. Yes, th- they do. I mean, look I'm at welfare uh, in general. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services is all about uh, using what we think are good uh, moral and uh, generally upheld uh, viewpoints of everybody of any or no faith to help our neighbor and to so clothe So where does that come from people. then? And wh- where, if, if it's not faith, if it's not your inherent belief in what's right and wrong, which whether you like it or not comes I think from some faithful teachings. I mean, even people who profess no faith have been taught some things in the past at some point about what's good, what's right, what's you know, acceptable in society. So where does that come from then? If it's not faith, well, where does the idea that we have some obligation to take care of our neighbor come from? I think uh, I can't speak for atheists, but I think they feel as though a moral code is something that is uh, instinctual. A moral code in- is instinctive in people. Can you have a moral code if you're not a faith p- person of faith? I, th- I think so. How? Oh. Where does it come from? I think it's inherent in humans to have to be to want to raise up and help humanity. Well, it's not inherent in all humans. There I, are, I, I can give you classic examples of people who have acted exactly counter to that. Well, and I. I think you can find Christians who have exa- acted counter to all of these ideals we're discussing. Right. So where does it come from, then, if it's not your I faith? I think it, it's a, our inherent inhumanity to take good care of each other. Our inherent inhumanity? Uh, uh, in our inherent humanity okay. to take good care <laughs> of each other. And uh, I think uh, religions may, in the mind of folks who aren't people of faith, just codify it. You know, they put it down in Scripture and had their prophets say it and so on, but they may feel as though that this is inherent. What St. Augustine says, everybody has a God-shaped hole in them, and so therefore this is uh, the fact that we all have some sort of an interest in a God, every society has an, an interest in a God, and then use that God to affect their behavior. Well, what did our friend, what did our one writer call God? A friendly, uh, imaginary friend? An imaginary friend. <laughs> uh, Nicole, who is a very real friend of ours, uh, says, your freedom of religion does not nullify my freedoms. An elected official does not have the right to use his or her religious beliefs to infringe on my basic rights, for example, to marry, to circ- circumvent my reproductive rights, to free speech, etc. I'm thinking of some of these leaders should spend more time reading the Constitution and not the Bible, says Nicole. But who says these are your basic rights? Well, our Constitution has a lot of basic rights in it, I guess. Right, that uh, and that's that's our Constitution. But, I mean, basic rights, the, the things she mentioned there are not basic rights delivered in our Constitution. They're interpreted rights based on the current climate and current political beliefs. Okay, 1-800-795-9565. Call us now, last-minute dialers only. Uh, last letter comes from Caitlin, third smartest woman in the world, says, I've come to realize something. Religious Republicans spend a lot of time thinking about bestiality and pedophilia. And Chris... You're on the mark. Yeah, Joe has said several times, and what he just said sort of relates to that, that uh, he, that atheists or agnostics believe in nothing. And I would like to just turn them around and we can equally say, since God doesn't exist, it's the people who believe in God who believe in nothing. If both of them are poor <laughs> arguments and equally poor. Point well taken. <laughs> Just remember, whatever well happens whatever happens after death, uh, nobody's going to be around to tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, so you should convert to every religion just before you die, so you it's the Pascal Gump gamble, as it's called. <laughs> well, Kevin, and I have a feeling that you're going to heaven, and there will be somebody there that will tell you you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, so. what I, that's what I'm saying. If I'm wrong, nobody's going to be, and, and there's no God, then nobody's going to be there to tell me I'm wrong. Somehow I think Chris will be there to tell you you're wrong. All of us working (laughs) class dogs go to heaven. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll open up the phones tomorrow. Than Mitchell, the co-host, I'm sure he's going to elaborate poetically on this very topic, which I think is critically important and relates to uh, the big issues, all the big issues of our time. Thank you, Joe. Mayor of Shemokin Dam, Republican, and but a real free thinker. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody, for listening. See to you Thursday. On the Mark. Sunbury Motor Company, our main sponsor, Lenape Solar, sponsors the email in basket. And this is WKOK Sunbury. <laughs>